creating conversations that you can share. That's what we do on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 380 is with Dr. Mark Borg, author of Making Your Crazy Work For You. Hello, hello. Hey, what's going on, doctor? You would not believe this. I am trying, as we speak, to get a car out from a snowbank oh, no. <laughs> like right this second we got stuck i thought i was going to get to a rest stop in time and i might still be able to get into the car and be quiet um but i first have to make sure some incredibly nice people are helping us dig our car out of the snow i mean it's just unbelievable what's happened hey do you want to do you want to talk tomorrow then when you when your car is back in the garage yeah what time is good for you uh you let me let me look real fast here okay now now snow i mean i mean what part of the country are you in because we got oh, snow in the God. carolinas today uh, that's where we are. We we went through the Carolinas and we are now in Virginia. And this incredibly nice guy is uh, just dug us out. That is I think we got a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, got it. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. So I mean, it's unbelievable. So we we came from California, right? Yeah. And we um and we got stuck in Orlando, and oh, they told no. us and, yesterday, and they told us that it would take two days for us to get a flight so we decided to get a car <laughs> and so we drove and we were doing pretty pretty good until we got into the snowstorm that hit you yeah. and that is where we are right now we're in virginia and we've been here for five hours oh, on the I-95. oh my god <laughs> so um th- there's a couple of options one it's so slow here. I could do the interview right now if it's if if it's okay. I mean, if, Let, if there's an okay sound. Oh man, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Isn't this what your book is all about? Making your it crazy is. work for you. It is. I mean, I think that ironically. I mean, I've, and the funny thing is, I have a beautiful wife and two beautiful children in the car with me, and they've told me they'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I say. <sighs> Although I just got done with another nice gentleman and my daughter pushing the car out of the snow, uh, I'd be happy to have the interview. So when, when you write a book like this and it's playing out the way that it is today, what is that? I mean, that right there, you've been given a set of tools that you can say, by the way, let me tell you how important this book is because this happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can say it's happening to me right now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I had such a nice time with you last time, I figured, because I talked to Kelly Daniel earlier today, and I'm like, do you think I should go through with this? And she's like, yeah, you know, Arrow will be okay one way or the other, she thought. So I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> you know? But I cannot believe you caught me literally, literally at the moment I was pushing the car out of a snowbank with a, a couple of other guys. Well, oh. it, isn't that what the universe is all about? It puts people in the right place at the right time? I think so. I mean, that has been the case all day today. You know, we've gotten out a couple of times and given some pushes and other people have gotten out and helped us. I mean, it's been it's been really tough. I mean, we have been stuck like I've never been stuck before. But it, it I mean, never, never in my life has I have I experienced. I'm from California. I don't <laughs> know from snow. You know? Oh, oh, especially like, Carolina snow because it's a different kind of snow in this part of the world. It's very wet. Oh, it's so wet. It is so wet. And my, you know, we, we all are in the car going, what? Why is everybody stuck here? Is there no system for dealing with this? And it just seems like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe not. But, but again, maybe it's, maybe it's Carolina or maybe it's Virginia, but people have been incredibly kind with just getting out of their cars to help us. Just, just that. Doctor, what you've been introduced to is Southern Charm. That's exactly who, how we are here in this part of the world. Well, I, we are experiencing it today because it really, I mean, we would be stuck, you know, I don't know how many, I, I would have to say only about 10 miles because that's about all we've gone in the last five hours. Oh my God. My it's God. Rough. Now, when you write a book like Making Your Crazy Work For You, you, you got to start with, I mean, the reader's going to be sitting there going, okay, okay, okay. But it really does begin with a relationship, building a relationship with me, myself, and I. Right. Right. And the way we think about that, I mean, at least, you know, my co-authors and I, we do think about the relationship that we form with ourselves as being kind of founded upon good, early caretaking relationships in our life. And that's why this book is still connected to the first two in the series, which are the ear relationship books, which are all about caretaking and how we Mm -hmm. internalize caretaking. And if we don't get a certain kind of caretaking, you know, early in our lives, and we sometimes wind up compensating, reversing the caretaking and taking care of other people, but we often do it in a way, that's such a great example for today in the snow, because that kind of caretaking that we write about does not allow other people to take care of us. It actually gets in the way 
of allowing other people to take care of us. And so the crazy that we talk about in this new book is a kind of isolation that we feel when we're so busy taking care of other people mm-hmm. that we leave no room for them to reciprocate. You know, you bring up a very interesting point. My, my sister, God bless her, she was the caretaker for my father, my brother, and my mother, and she absolutely did not make any room for herself, and she's miserable. Uh, and and uh, she's, she's going to get this book, I guarantee you. Uh, well, I've been miserable too. You know, I, I started this book series you know, 11 years ago with these two guys, and it was originally called Are You a Human Antidepressant? <laughs> because I had this belief that people were going out there trying to take care of other people, being yep. almost operating like medicine for other people, but they were making themselves miserable by doing so. So resentful, so resentful, not even realizing that it was the way they were ca- taking care of other people. It was almost like the force with which they were taking care of other people would not allow the care of other people to get in. Mm. Now, do you think that's one of the reasons why over the past 23 months with COVID-19, you know, like, for instance, I've struggled with the fact that I don't like being away from my wife because it's, mm-hmm. it's like uh, we were taking care of each other. I don't want to yeah. go anywhere but be right here. Yeah, yeah. I, I have felt that way, too. Even in the morning, sometimes I get up. I haven't. My wife is sitting here right here driving beside me. I don't think she knows this, but I literally like don't want her to get up before me. Like I literally like to sit there in bed going, I'm only comfortable with this person lying next to me here in my, in, in the bed. <laughs> because again, I think maybe you and I thank goodness have done some work on this issue. You know, <laughs> like, We're allowing these people to, to contribute to our care. You know, we're allowing some of that love that they're offering us to get in. And that, and that is what the book's about because it's about the isolation that this, kind of caretaking that we were talking about your sister myself years ago you know that kind of caretaking just doesn't leave room right i i would love to see how readers are going to handle this book in the way of i'll bet you they're there with a with a writing instrument in their hand and they're underlining things or they're highlighting things because Mm. there's so many valuable points in this book uh yeah we're asking them to i at the the end of our first i think at the end of the um at the end of the uh, preface, we were asking, like, please pick up a pen. Yep. Please yep. pick up a highlighter. Because, you know, there's a lot of things, I think, that are going to sneak up on uh, – they snuck up on me. You know, I've reread the book a couple of times along the way. And I – because I wrote it with two other people. So occasionally something will kind of slip in there that I'm like, whoa, I didn't quite catch that. You know, because with this book, we're, we're also attaching uh, to, the, to the idea and the experience of trauma. So we're talking about how if you're left in that isolated state for too long, mm-hmm. you know, the crazy, yeah, we're using it a little light touch, but there's also a kind of crazy that can be traumatic where we've so, so completely cut ourselves off from each other that we've cut ourselves off from ourselves as well. And we are really in trouble. Now, that kind of isolation is devastating. Now, Native American medicine men would go looking for the crazy children because they always believed that they held the powers to continue on with the medicine. Yeah, but, and interestingly, I think that that's a, such a great example because that kind of crazy then gets put to use to care for other the community. People. Yep, right. Other people. That's exactly right. Yep. And they yep. and they wind up in a prestigious position in their community because of their giving. And I imagine because that kind of giving is very reciprocal, very mutual. You know, they're giving and they're receiving. You know, all of the honor that you get from being from being that kind of crazy. So when you release a book like this, I mean, you've now relinquished it to us. Does that yes. open space for you or, or are you going on to the next book? Um, it's it's an open space, though. I'm also now, I'm now working on a book with my wife, oh. um, <laughs> which I think is very much to the point you were talking about earlier about COVID. You know, all the things that we're all learning about each other by being in these um, in these places that we experience our, ourselves in each other so differently with all the hours uh, that we that we get to spend together. Yeah. Let me let me ask you a question about the the collaboration that you've had with Dr. Grant as well as uh, uh, Danny in, in, in the way that uh, as, a, as a broadcast instructor where I'm invited to different campuses, I always tell them, don't go and do a project with a group of people. Do it on your own. And everybody else is a guest. And the reason uh-huh. because because, I mean, you're not always on the same page. Right. Oh, we have we have <laughs> we have been off the same same page several times, and I think that you and I worked together. We had an interview uh, a couple of years ago about a book that I, a different book that I wrote about uh, how I was having a hard time sometimes dealing with the differences. It, the, the book was called "Don't Be a Beep." 
book. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the book was about not being a jerk, but, but, you know, but it was about me learning to not be a jerk as I learned to get along and work with other people. And th- it was those two specifically, Grant and Danny. Yeah. Because you know? it was hard. <laughs> it, it's really hard working in a collaboration. You're exactly right. You, you, put, you put some focus on criticizing. And, 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 and the, I think the first belief, you're confirming my consistent belief that other people are not to be counted on. So I go right back into that self-ear relationship. I go right back into that self-sufficiency because you've just given me evidence that I can count on you to mistreat me. Wow. So now, yeah. do, you, do you, you know, readers are going to want more and more and more and more. They can, it's, it's like me with Julia Cameron. I've read every one of her books, but what am I going to do with it? The same right. thing with you. Now, are you creating a, a website where you can have, you know, interacting and with through, through different web, I mean, you know, books and stuff like that? Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. We have a, we have a, a website that's interactive. It's www.irrelationship.com. Um, we also have two blogs on psychology today nice. where we take feedback from readers. We take phone calls. Uh, there are times that I've actually done consultation uh, with readers uh, who have said, oh, my goodness, my relationship needs this kind of work. So I've done some one on one work and I've done uh, couples, especially couples work with the first two books, because the first two books in this series were, were, were very specifically related to couples and, and largely a romantic relationship. So I was I was with actor uh, uh, Tyler Labine today. He he plays uh, Doctor Izzy on this thing called New Amsterdam, and he's and he's a psychologist, but he also says that he's he's a psychotherapist. He's got uh-huh. his butt blistered twice because there 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 is a there's a major difference between the two. And I don't do, do listeners understand that they they really are two completely different departments. Yeah, it's usually not. I mean, usually, I mean, again, you just use the word therapist so generically. But then you can get it. Some people they get on really hot, hot, hot <laughs> buttons around therapists, around psychotherapists, around psychoanalysts, around cognitive behavioral therapists. There are people from the couple and the family camp who don't <laughs> want to be associated with psychoanalysis because it's associated with elitism. And you know, I mean, I think we're hopefully really trying to kind of veer away from elitism and 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 really allow ourselves and our work to be more accessible. So I mean, that yeah, those can be really hot buttons for us. A uh, shrinks, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> especially if we're territorial, you know, especially if we're like, okay, you know, this is my territory and I've staked the claim. Um, but I, I mean, you know, it's funny because I'm a psychoanalyst and my, and my wife um, has been trained at a family uh, institute and largely works with couples. And so we'll sometimes have a, this discussion, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to be very careful about what I say right now because as I told you, <laughs> she's driving while I'm talking to you. So <laughs> you, your book has come out at, at a really great time in history. And the reason why I bring that up is because, y- yes, people are going to get mental help and all that kind of stuff, but they're also running into a, a brick wall called a flat screen and they're not getting in the office but they're having visits online your right. book opens up the heart in a way of saying hey you know like okay come here calm down a bit let's put this all together yeah 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 and i mean again i still think that there is something to the fact that we did grab hold of those things for a while to stay connected to each other right. in whatever way we could you know i know people who do 12-step uh groups uh that way and i know people who a lot of people do still do therapy that way um and, and, you know, I mean, just uh, the will to stay connected. I mean, I, I, I've been desperate. You know, I've met with Danny uh, of our group every week throughout this whole time. Mm-hmm. He lives right down the street from me. So we found a way, I don't know, coffee. In the beginning, it was, uh, you know, social distanced, uh, you know, picnic bench or something, you know. I mean, so much stuff. But I, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think there's going to be something about giving up the convenience of those screens and, and trying to shake ourselves in each other and go, remember, like we need each other. We need that stuff firing off in our brain. We even need it chemically. We need that oxytocin, like <laughs> that hormone, you know, the spurts when we're close to each other, you know? So, you know, I mean, it, it's especially prominent, interestingly, you know, in breastfeeding and orgasm. So, I mean, that says right there, we need to be close to each other. Physically. Absolutely. Would, would you say that satisfaction has been reshaped? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And again, I mean, you know that the book also reframes satisfaction to kind of be almost the inverse of what we were talking about earlier with criticism. Like, I get nervous about satisfaction for the very same reason that I'm happy about criticism because when it's when I'm in satisfaction, I start to have a different kind of reliance on you, mm. right? I can count on you. I can create because satisfaction, the way we describe it, isn't solo. It's something we create together. And if we're creating it together, then we're creating a break 
from that craziness, from the isolation of your relationship. Yeah, but then we're introduced to ghosting, and that's the part that kills me. Oh, God. Well, again, <laughs> then, if, if, then, then you're still not, if you're ghosting, then you're not making use of crazy, right? You're <laughs> holding on to your craziness. You're convincing yourself that that other person, there's something wrong with that person. You're entitling yourself to mistreat that person, <laughs> right? I mean, you're entitling yourself to treat that person like, you know, Something like something discardable. <laughs> you know? I, I, I'm, I'm careful here with my language. I mean, obviously yeah. I'm on air, but also I have two beautiful children in the back seat. <laughs> this is a very funny interview. <laughs> As a police car just goes ripping down the highway here, I think there's so many accidents on this highway oh, on yeah. I-95. You just couldn't believe it. Oh, it's it's so Carolina, and it's like uh, I'll never forget. We <laughs> we uh, a couple of years back, we uh, were, were DJs, and we and they would not cancel the wedding, so we drove up into the mountains, and we were and, oh. and it was all in four wheel drives, and just one oh. one little wheel turn at a time to get up that mountain. Yep. yep. Oh man, Ooh, well that's 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 serious courage there. <laughs> this has been this has been among the more difficult days ever for my family driving through the Carolina <laughs> and Virginia. Well, what, what it's probably going to do only because when, when you were describing it and all that stuff, I said, hey, I really honestly believe it. He's going to write the next shack. And, 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 <laughs> and you know, you, you, because you've got all the ingredients to write a, a, a novel like that, that is very yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty scary. <laughs> but, I, but you know what? I'm so grateful that these are the three people that I'm, I'm, that I'm driving with. This has been such a difficult day. and We have all gotten along. We have all listened to each other. All right. We have all supported each other. We have all, all, all four of us have found a way to, to really be a family here. So I'm very grateful for that. So now, do you understand the definition, the Southern term of cold to the bone now? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I Just then, just before I jumped back in the car to talk to you. Yes. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was. And you know, it's a funny thing. We started in Florida. So when we got into this snowstorm, I was wearing flip flops. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work so well. <laughs> I love it. Doctor, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. You know the door is always open for yeah, you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And thank you for your openness. Thank you for, you know, allowing me to be here, even with all the, like, distraction going on here in my life. I am so glad to take the time to be with you and you me. All right, buddy. Well, you be brilliant and you be safe, okay? Thank you so much. You take care. I hope to see you next time. Maybe next time I'll see you with my wife. There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I'd love to. <laughs>